Hi everyone, today I uh, wanted to have a look at adding external instruments into uh, Cubase and getting them to show up as um, instruments that you can add just like a VC. So I recently bought a couple of hardware synths, uh, a couple of Behringer hardware synths uh, because they're so cheap and I wanted to uh, test them out and work them into my workflow and do uh, very specific things with them. I bought a uh, Behringer K2 and also a uh, Behringer Crave and they're both mono synths so I'll, I'll probably use them for ARPs and then bass sounds and effect sounds and that kind of stuff. I've tested it out and it works great and I want to show how you can kind of integrate it into the way that Cubase kind of wants you to uh, and the capabilities of these analog synths is that they have a uh, MIDI in function so that uh, I can send the signals from Cubase to the synths themselves and then drag in the audio return and have that work aut automatically. This is a project. Uh, I have a couple of other synths here and uh, uh, the traditional way, the way I started uh, doing this was to add a MIDI track, then say for the output for that MIDI track, send that to the synths and then have a audio return that so that I can hear uh, what I'm sending. And that worked okay for a couple of different things uh, and for other stuff it didn't work. If we have a look at the studio connections, uh, F4 or it's right here, there's a tab called external instruments. So you have your inputs, outputs, external effects, if you have external reverbs and all that uh, malarkey, uh, and the control room, which I love very much. Um, but there's also a tab called external instruments and you can add stuff into there. So let's add the K2 for this video and uh, I'll show you how. I'm uh, clicking the add external instrument. I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it actually uh, just to keep it uh, easier. I'm going to say K2 instrument. And since it's a mono uh, instrument, I'm going to add a mono return and remove the stereo return. Okay, so if it was a instrument that had multiple outputs, you could uh, add all of those into this setup. Um, since this also has MIDI in, I can associate a MIDI device and I'll, I'll do that um, and say that I want to create a device. So let's do that as well. So I'm, uh, I'm not going to do anything else, but actually click OK. And then uh, I'm going to say OK. So this is where we're at right now. I have a um, bus named uh, K2 MIDI and I have a return bus one. I believe I don't need to rename that, but I can assign it to where I know that it's going to be received. So obviously you would need a interface that had uh, inputs for this and off you go. Um, now I'm going to go to the MIDI device and open the MIDI device manager. And then this guy comes up. I've made like a, uh, it's almost like an aggregate MIDI device, I believe, and you can send it to whatever other uh, MIDI output you have. And I have a lot of different ones. Uh, you can see I have the K2 here and the Crave uh, down here. So I'm just going to select the K2, close it. And uh, when I add a track, it's going to, uh, this is going to be ticked so that it says that it's, it's used. Let me see if I can add it right now. Uh, so this, this should be really good to go. Let's see. Let's add an instrument track and uh, right now it shows up here and that's so cool. Um, so uh, no, actually it doesn't, it doesn't. And the reason uh, the last step we need to do, at least I need to do this because I have another way of showing my instrument. I, I want to choose which wants to be visible and not. And so I go to VST plugin manager and go to VST instruments. Uh, I can remove my old K2 and get this guy in here. If I add an instrument track now, I have this thing, I can add that track. You can now see that I'm receiving uh, MIDI on all inputs. 
uh, I have the uh, MIDI output assigned to the K2 MIDI and I can see that I'm receiving uh, stuff on the K2. So let's just figure out why I'm not hearing anything and it's because the volume was down. So I'm gonna turn off the speakers for this. And uh, the beauty of this is that it, it kind of just works. Uh, you can set the delay if you want to. For me, I think this is acceptable. And I can uh, add the uh, constrain delay compensation if I want to. That my uh, shortcut for that is just exclamation mark, shift one. Um, and this enables me to do a couple of cool things. So for example, I can do MIDI inserts for this. Um, let us do, uh, let's add a chord track. Uh, I already have it, that's cool. So I'm gonna add uh, the chords from this session into the instrument. Uh, I have a key command for that. So now I have a lot of different chords, but seeing as this is a mono instrument, it will only be able to play one of the notes, right? Uh, but what I can do is add uh, MIDI inserts and one of them is called Arpachi. Now I can set uh, the step size, the length, key range and all of that stuff. That is very, very powerful. And you can do all sorts of different cool stuff with these things. Um, and you're doing all that from the uh, instrument itself. I know, of course, if you want to, you can just play it. Uh, you can also play it with the plugin on uh, and play, play chords like that. So that's really, really helpful. The way I use these is I will, I will maybe give it some MIDI to play and then I'll perform with it. Uh, and I want that stuff to be uh, captured. And to do that, I would, in addition to this, uh, add, need to add an instrument that was recording at that same input uh, and uh, go from there. So it will be uh, really easy for me to add a mono audio track, set that to the same input and no, it isn't. And the reason is that this input is now reserved for that instrument. So the way I'm going about this is that I'm sending this track to a group track. Uh, and I haven't set this up in my template. So let's do that very quickly. Uh, just add selected to group and uh, that's a key command. And then I'm saying uh, like K2 yeah, group, for example, that will be very easy to remember and see. So this is now a group and I can't record from this. So I'll, in addition to that, I'll need a mono track and the input for that, I need that to be connected to a bus, to a group and to the K2 group. Uh, and I can say K2. Um, so if you're coming from Ableton, this would be like the resample thing that is kind of integrated into that. Um, and uh, I'm just going to say record. And now um, I can record this and capture the performance. All right, we've uh, got some sound now and this won't sound the same the next time I play it back, right? Because it's only sending stuff out and receiving audio back. Uh, but uh, if I set it up this way and, uh, you know, I could do a analog synths group, you know, and then just solo it uh, just when I was recording. And that way I would be able to do uh, very easy stuff like, um, like just doing noise, noises. And if I turn off this Arpachi, right, I could very easily. Do a lot of white noise stuff and um, noises and get that those in. 
very quickly. So that is how uh, you set this stuff up. It's it's um, very easy and it's a very powerful way to work with uh, newer analog synths that has the MIDI capability. Uh, and it kind of works seamlessly. It shows up as an instrument in Cubase and it's, it's nice. So uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.